Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 72, streamed live on March 21st, 2020. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Marius. Hello. Florian. Hello. Alfred. He's muted. And Jan. <laughs> Hello. You didn't hear Alfred on that one. I don't know what's happening with noise gating. All right. Here we can go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, fuller house than usual. Welcome back, Jan. Welcome back, Alfred. Thank you. Thank you. A triumphant return, I hope. <laughs> well, <laughs> always. We <laughs> he kind of ride again on my noble steed. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great roundup of news and questions to get to today, but before we do that, let's talk just for a moment about the current worldwide issue, because the COVID-19 emergency has caused many changes to our everyday lives, some not for the better. And for many, we're encountering a time of isolation, loneliness, stress, um, anxiety, and depression. I am and it might, daily anyway, so... Huh? It might not let up soon. I mentioned this at the top to tell all of you, everyone is experiencing the same situation right now. And we all have different ways to respond to this new and stressful world. So please be mindful of one another while you're conversing online. Uh, now more than ever, remember the human. And if you're a contributor to Ubuntu Touch or any volunteer project or anything really, please follow the most important rule of an emergency the most important person is yourself, and your safety comes first. Uh, we've included links to the World Health, Health Organization's COVID-19 advice for the public and the United States CDC's How to Prepare guide in the video description. Uh, both of those guides include information on protecting yourself and your family, establishing plans for communication, and managing your mental health during this time. If you haven't yet, please take the time to review these materials and heed their guidance. With that said and out of the way, let's talk a little bit about Ubuntu Touch. And Jan begins this week with something that's actually almost all about Ubuntu Touch, but more about the foundation. Yes, something we have been working towards forever. We are now finally able to receive SEPA direct bank wire transactions in the foundation bank account. Um, finally, 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 this has been such a long, such a long time coming. Uh, I know many people in the community have been waiting really eagerly for this, um, but we are now finally there. Um, there will be a blog post next week um, about some of the details with um, uh, with tax exempt donations, because as you probably know, we are registered as a nonprofit foundation in Germany. Um, so for the Germans, uh, it's the easiest to um, donate and uh, claim taxes for your donations. Um, but it works for some other countries as well, especially European countries. Um, and for the others, we are going to figure stuff out in the long run. Um, yeah, this is this has been a really long time coming. I don't know, Marius, if you put the uh, the EVA number on the screen. It is yes. on top there. You can see it there. Okay. It'll also be in the description. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, as I said, there will be a blog post about it. Um, we have yet to update our donate page on the website, um, but that's going to be there pretty soon over the next days. Uh, we just have to do either Oh, 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 we have to do what? But you can already donate if you want to. Um, Pause. And you can. I think <laughs> Jan's network in Germany is. Okay. We have Silence. Silence. Internet. Oh yeah. my god. Quiet so Wayne knows where to cut. Okay, so you uh, stopped on, where was he? <laughs> Shoot. He was on Donate. Yeah, the <laughs> Donate page. That's where you stopped. Yeah. 
Uh, start again from the donate page. <laughs> okay, so we have yet to update the donate page um, and uh, change everything there, uh, but you can already donate. Um, and yes, some more details will follow. Uh, we also have a new PayPal link where we pay slightly lower fees. Um, so that's interesting. Um, we can also post that in the description and that of course will be on the donate page. And we are able to uh, offer Stripe as a payment provider over at LibraPay, which also has lower fees for some people, um, which also is now unblocked finally by the, by the bank account. Um, so if you are over at LibraPay, you can change that over. Um, and uh, something that also some people have complained to me about, uh, we are fixing some stuff with our Patreon rewards. Um, if you are already a Patreon, uh, go over there and uh, and check it out. Um, we wrote a post there yesterday about some of the details. And if there's any problem uh, there, please send us um, a direct message over on Patreon. Uh, so we can fix it. Yes, that's it. All right. And that'll be excellent. Again, that IBAN information will be in the video description and will be coming out on our blog and in other places soon. So if someone wants to have a confirmation for the donation, how should they proceed now? If they would transfer now money, they just um, wouldn't get anything from us. Should they put the email address there or something like that? Uh, so you can put your postal address uh, in the in the, um, in the purpose uh, text field. Yeah. Verwendungszweck as the nice <laughs> German word for it is. <laughs> um, so you can put your postal address uh, and then we will issue you a donation receipt. Um, but for donations up to and including 200 euros, uh, you only need your bank statement and another piece of paper that we are still working on. Um, that will be in the blog post, um, and then you can just give that to the um, to the tax authority like this, uh, and that is enough uh, as a donation. For donations that are bigger, um, you have to have a, a special uh, receipt from us, um, and for that, you either put your postal address or you uh, send us an email, uh, and then we will issue the receipt um, and send us an email until when when did you donate uh, and all the details so so we can we can match it so we can actually confirm that that we got the money because there are some uh, bureaucratic hurdles for this um yes um but this is this is really good because um sepa um bankwire has very low fees especially if you are in europe um if you are in the United States, it probably doesn't make sense in, in some other parts of the world. Um, but for Europeans, um, this will be the most effective way to donate to us. Go to Europe. Right. Go to Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move to Europe. <laughs> Move to Europe, then donate. <laughs> <laughs> Easy two-step process. <laughs> oh, all right. Well... Thank you, Jan, and thank you to all of you for working on that. I know it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I want to I want to um, recognize from the board of directors here, um, who also did a lot of work on this. Um, so it's it's really good that it's finally here. The bank account. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to things that are happening in the operating system. Then some progress on OTA twelve. So, past couple of weeks have been um, a little bit slower than times before. Uh, things are happening in the world, in case you haven't heard. <laughs> so, um, staffing has been a little strange for a little bit. However, uh, with a change to Blue Z, um, merging some security fi fixes, it broke, and then we fixed Bluetooth on the Nexus 5. Sorry, everyone on RC went through that one. Um, we also have, I know that a lot of people watching are going to like this one, a uh, prepared fix for Libertine in portrait mode. Mm -hmm. So if you are a Libertine user and you particularly like to use it at all, um, this is the fix for you. If you've been using RC, you know that there's been some display corruption when you open apps, and that's been fixed by this pull request. It's still in review. Yep. And that's what's been happening in OTA 12. Back to you, Marius. 
Actually, back to you, Jan. Back to Jan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another foundation collaboration that is um, happening now. Uh, I, you already know about it if you are a regular viewer of the Q and A. Um, but we are working together with Voller, um, who's uh, a German phone startup, um, creating. Um, they they ran a Kickstarter campaign recently. Oh no, an Indiegogo campaign actually um, for a new phone, um, and uh, we have been working with them successfully for a while now and uh, we are ready to formalize that uh, that friendship a little more uh, no we are not marrying them but they are joining us as a sponsor and um, uh, and joining our advisory board as the foundation now uh, is is uh, picking up speed um, and uh, we are looking forward to working closer closely with them more um, Ubuntu Dutch will probably also be an option uh, to have pre-installed on the Voller phone uh, that they are making. Um, and we are going to include the Voller phone um, in the other operating systems that it's going to run um, in the installer as well, of course. Um, so yes, um, you can uh, check out Voller at uh, voller.online. That's their website. Um, they are also going to host um, a hackathon if it isn't canceled because of COVID. Probably will be so far they are still yeah. holding on to the plans. So it's it's scheduled for sixth and seventh uh, of June. Uh, more information oh. on that also on voller.online. Uh, it it might happen. Check it out. Uh, additionally, Dr. Jorg Werzer was on Ubuntu Touch Q and A sixty three. If you'd like to go back and learn more about the cooperation there. Yeah, that was a good episode as well. I think. Uh, I can post that in chat. I have powers. All right. Okay. And we uh, talk a little bit more about things that have been happening in the community this week. Let's talk about some new and updated apps. Alfred, it's very convenient that you're here because I think you updated ISO Drive this week. Yeah, all right. So, um, to don't know, uh, ISO Drive is an application that allows you to use your, app, your uh, Ubuntu Touch device as a CD-ROM drive. Uh, so you put an ISO file, a typical Ubuntu ISO or whatever, or Arch Linux, whatever you want to install, you put that on the device, you select it into your computer, and then you can boot off uh, the phone. Great, and what it now does is um, it also supports now uh, uh, config fs uh, based implementations that means basically ports are now able to use iso drive correctly not only the core devices but also the community uh, ports as well that make use of this newer technology so and i have including looked one xperia x exactly received any complaints now so it seems to work fine <laughs> Testing, testing is, like is the pros. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. And that is awesome because you just download the ISO onto your phone, basically plug it in and boot. So you don't even need to carry around your collection of flash drives anymore. Like uh, some people have had to do. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, other new apps this week include Stefan's UMPD client for the MPD Music Demon, if you want to play some music um, on other devices using your Ubuntu Touch phone as a controller. And if you have kids or you really need to de-stress, uh, Brian released an updated version of the beloved Mini Maker set of apps for kids, uh, which are sticker applications and allow you to put stickers on a page and uh, draw and do things that are fun. Oh. Oh, yes. I yeah. Need, I need to download this. <laughs> <laughs> so I need this in my life. You won't have that mess anymore on the paper. You have to <laughs> That's super. Uh, all right. Marius, over to you. Over to me already. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so I have been, um, well, last week, and as Dalton said, we have been a little bit under uh, staffed um, because I had to, to help out with, uh, with other stuff in 
since the COVID uh, thing is come. Um, so yeah, I've been been doing some medical stuff. Uh, so yeah, but other than that, I um, came back three days ago and I I hacked along on on a Pine phone. Uh, so currently, somebody say Pine phone. I did. Uh, that was we, a bad joke. <laughs> I'll stop. We now have something that you might recognize as Bluetooth. I'm not sure if you heard about it before, but you can see the icon and you can turn it on. It's upside down, but I not sure if I have any Bluetooth devices nearby. I do. There comes one. It's scanned. It's the me. Good work. Uh, so everything Good is job. everything is uh, the wrong way for you guys, but. It flips. You're good. Yeah. Uh, what more? What more? Uh, yeah. I also have. So now, if it would charge, it would be nice. Uh, live. Live demo charge. Oh, it. It should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, while that is doing charge its thing. Status. Um, I can. Un- so we're talking about the lead. Yeah, the lead. But I, I will show the the sensor first. Uh, so here's one of the sensors. Ooh. Accelerometer. Accelerometer mm. is working. Uh, and gyroscope is working. Where are you? Okay. Gyroscope. It's like a gyroscope, gyroscope. but for him. Sounds like a manga yeah. series. <laughs> but for him. Uh. Well, trust me, it is there. <laughs> but. Uh, I also have vibrator, vibrator, right? I vibrator working. Uh, the phone goes bzzz. The, it does indeed go bzzz. Um, actually, I could could send it a notification. I can shoot it a text. And then it will go bzzz. Then it will go bzzz. We indeed. send you a notification. No, no not problem. not you. I need uh, I need a a phone thing. SMS already worked, so this isn't anything new. Actually, Ooh, I... You didn't install teleports. Oh my god, how can well, I be? Well, I reflash it every Put day. Put on. I, I reflash <laughs> it so often, I can't, I can't deal with it. It's too much. Uh, now, now the that, amazing list of all the things you're signed into would buy. Now the, the trick is not to show my number live, which would be nice. Um, so now. Oh, by the way, you can also show rotation. Don't forget about it. That's so smooth. I send myself that's a text. So, yeah, that's so I get the number itself. There we go. Then I need to close that so it gets the notification. Maybe. Did you hear that? Listen to the buzz. Did it, Did you hear it? But... <laughs> no, it didn't work. But we get it. You got the vibration motor working. But yeah, you can also see. Uh, you can see the, prox- the LED works. LED ah. and, pro- and proximity meter. You can see the proximity yeah. working there. You can see it blinking, and that's interesting how it you, works. So yeah, you can see that. Out laser beams. No, you can't see that in real life. <laughs> you can't see that in real life. It's um, only cameras. But you can also see that I sen- I send myself a text, and you can see it there. I try to cover my number, so, but. Yeah. Yes, you got a text message. I did get a text message. I can send a text message and receive a text message and call. Actually, I should call myself so you can guys can listen. This 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 will be fun. <laughs> this will go well. Of course it will. Okay, I get something. I get myself a coffee in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I can. T- this is so, where yeah, the show has know? to be one hour long. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> We can fill the gap with a little bit of talking about did anyone in Germany uh, already receive the Pine phone now? Because before it was blocked by customs forever, and now probably there is a problem with distributing all the stuff again. Hello. You are aware that I don't know every person in Germany, right? Okay, no? So... Well, do you know one person in Germany that should have gotten a Pine phone? I try to. I, I know I'm that. Not sure. that I, but I don't. Oh, God. I showed my number. Okay. Oh, jeez. Here oh, we go. Well, yeah. No, nope. all the calls. Here we go. Should come. we maybe just move on? I think the people know what a vibrating phone. 
I think they also know what a phone call sounds like, but this is exciting. Yeah. But yeah, let's move on. <laughs> so, but still, uh, if anybody from Germany already got the Bind phone officially shipped, um, just uh, drop us a message so we get a feeling how many people got it already and how many people are still waiting because, yeah, it was a huge delay for Germany. Because I think of one sticker that was not on a modem chip or something like that. They so, um, sent out uh, messages to everyone in Germany to either have the shipment or have it refunded. And that is information on the forum at forum.pine64.org. Okay, great. Um, he couldn't call me because he's in Europe and I'm in America and I can't afford that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need something from, and, uh, from Europe to call me. Not now. Uh, Please not. In more <laughs> news, um, Mike Gabriel has been packaging uh, Lomiri in Debian. And he's been working on several uh, packages, including Qt Systems and Qt Feedback this week, which are going up into Debian's new queue for Unstable. So if you're testing Debian Unstable, you can install some of the dependencies for Lomiri, and this is all on the way to eventually getting the full stack in so that people can use Lomiri on Debian. Ooh. Thank you, Mike. It's been awesome seeing you every week. Yeah. And last up in the news, we have the Ubiport's App Dev AudioCast is back for another episode. So if you want to learn more about app development and the talks at UbuCon, you can find the app dev audio cast over at soundcloud.com slash ubiports. We have a SoundCloud. If one, of our, if one of our tweets ever goes viral, are we going to do the I have a SoundCloud thing? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You can also find the other talks um, from Ubicon Europe over on YouTube. Um, account is Ubicon Europe. Ooh. I think there's been four or five Ubuntu Touch talks, so it's good. All uploaded. All right. Thank you to everyone who worked on that. And also. Thank you to everyone who helps us create Ubuntu Touch by sponsoring. Vala, as we mentioned earlier, is a new sponsor. Thank you to them. And to all of our other sponsors at ubports.com slash sponsors, including our infrastructure sponsors, Smooth, Smooth, Private Internet App, DigitalOcean, and Packet.net, the works on ARM project. Thank you to all of you for making it possible for us to create Ubuntu Touch. Additionally, our community sponsors on Patreon, including a. Thiel, George Toma, Guido Hornig, Laurentine Tillman, Mark Johnston, Michael Dale Meyer, Milan Ilev, Renat Merkulev, and Thoralf San. All selected the community sponsor level on Patreon, and I appreciate that. If you'd like to join them and have me mispronounce your name as well, it is a special experience, I swear. Head over to patreon.com slash ubiports. Or if you prefer another way to donate, head over to ubiports.com slash donate. We have ways there, including PayPal and uh, LibrePay, or directly via Bitcoin, if you like to live dangerously these days. Bitcoin. Or a bank account, if you know how to open the video description. And as mentioned earlier, we will have a blog post and be updating that page in the near future to include our SEPA transfer information. Mm -hmm. All right. And thank you again to everyone who's making Ubuntu Touch possible, as well as to all the people who are making it possible via other means, like uh, giving your time. We really appreciate all of you testers out there and um, everyone who's helping us out. Thank you, too. We don't mention you enough. All right. Let's go to some questions. These questions are submitted... Um, from our live chats, including Telegram and YouTube live chat. And if you submit them on our forum at forums.ubports.com before the show, well, you're just going to get in early, aren't you? <gasps> All right. First up this week is from Fla. Who says slash asks, 
I know that this Q&A isn't the place to talk about specific bugs, however, and it's even more important now, I believe, with the current COVID-19 situation. What I need isn't a device which can do more, but a device which can do correctly what it's supposed to do. Isn't now a good time to focus on stability? I'm thinking about issues like not being able to receive SMS, deco crashing all the time going on for a while, listing off things like this. Pretty please, can we have features that work before new ones? Whew. No. Ooh. No. <laughs> well, nah, that's a little me. So, let me uh, take this one. So I got it. Thank you. The the current plan um, is is that we we first release OTA twelve, which gives us all the new features that we want, and then focusing on stability. That has always been the plan from from day one to do it like that. Um, I know it's annoying these type of bugs, uh, but many of the reasons why we did it this way is so we don't do dual work. So we don't fix it on the current one and then fix it again on the next one, which has multiple issues. Um, so that's the long answer. Mm -hmm. And we should also add that ODA 12 is not just um, new features. It's also things we have to do to keep up with development outside uh, of Ubuntu Touch. We have to update things, we have to move forward, uh, and this cannot wait. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. But of course, we are aware of the of the critical issues. We are using the phones mm -hmm. ourselves, so we, we know that, that you are suffering sometimes. Oh, yeah. And as been seen by us taking so long to ship OTA 12, what we're trying to do isn't exactly easy. But we are trying our hardest to prioritize things in a way that makes sure that we're fixing Things which are broken while we aren't being left in the dust by new technology. Yeah. So, and it's it's also since you mentioned COVID, um, it also has slowed down the development a little bit. So, that's that's also. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, magically switching context isn't exactly easy right now. So, um, your feedback on what you believe has to be fixed is helpful, um, but long lists like this. Um, are a little bit more discouraging. Um, so I'd say um, th things when you list off like this, most of the time are going to be fixed when someone fixes them. So if you're motivated to help us out fixing the things that you listed or that anyone else has, and this goes for the people who had similar questions in the thread this week about things like Bluetooth or Bluetooth or Bluetooth, um, We'd appreciate your help if you're willing to do so, um, so that we can get this done faster. Indeed. Hmm. Next up. Danfro asks, We have lots of simple web apps in the open store that are simple desktop links. It's easy to lose track when you're looking for a real app instead of a web app. Weber is a great tool for everyone to create a quick link for their favorite web page. How about including Weber as a pre-installed app or launching an unpublished simple web apps campaign to clear up the open store a bit? Yeah, Dan, this is something that I've talked about in private with Brian before and other people. And it's something that we're thinking about and considering. Um, The thing is, I almost wonder if a campaign like that needs to come from someone that isn't us. Otherwise, the messaging could get a little weird, like we want everyone to unpublish their apps in our store. Um, as much as we appreciate the all of the simple web apps that are in the store, it does tend to make new users confused. And especially in the Pine Phone room, we've got very... How do we say... Um, frank feedback that people don't quite appreciate um, that confusion. And by Frank, I mean meme. Uh, <laughs> but um, maybe that is something that could come from the community if people are interested in that kind of cleanup effort or change effort. I'm not sure about including Weber as a pre-installed app, but it's an idea. Okay. <laughs> Mike68 wrote us in this week to ask, 
Have you heard about the project to run mainlined Android on iPhones? And what are your thoughts about Ubuntu Touch on the iPhone? And do you still see a need to focus on hull based ports going forward since this one is running on mainline? Um, well, technically, yeah. the PinePhone runs mainline, but if we want to stay on course uh -oh. and actually focus on getting the phone usable, I think that's not our best bet right now. I'm not sure. Maybe if someone out there wants to do it, be my guest. Yeah, I, I apologize for laughing, but the Android and iPhone thing is kind of funny to me. <laughs> I find that really good. Um, I don't think Apple do. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Um, but yes, the need to run on to focus on these HAL based ports, like for the Xperia X, um, Volaphone, and other devices is most certainly something that we still need to continue to do. Mainline Linux on other devices is not to the point where we expect, given how it runs on our laptops like my, my XPS. It's just not quite there yet. All right. Arabic asks... Could you give a recap on which of the core devices and community devices are the ones that in theory can handle an external display and what the status of the system is on these being able to connect to a display and run desktop apps? I think this question came in the vein of Libertine this week. And as I said, uh, Libertine is completely useless in Devil and RC right now, but we have a PR in to fix that. Um, and once that's merged, all devices should be able to run Libertine apps. Um, However, I've heard the Nexus 5 has specific issues that I don't understand. Mm. Um, more so than that, uh, the devices which support external displays via a hard cable, including one like the Slimport cable, include the Nexus 5, Nexus 4, and Nexus 7 2013 Wi-Fi and LTE editions. Both support that. But their uh, USB ports are kind of finicky. Um, other devices which support wireless external display via one of these fancy Microsoft display adapters, that's the only one that we test for internally, um, include the Fairphone 2, OnePlus One, Meiju Pro 5, and MX4 question mark? Does anyone remember that one? Mm. I don't remember if it's enabled there or not. I it think may it, not. I think it is. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I um, believe it's not because uh, it's requiring some newer Android stuff, which is not in the MX4. Okay, that makes sense. Huh. Um, so yeah, you can use a Microsoft Display Adapter for those. They plug in via HDMI and USB, and they're about forty dollars uh, or fifty US. Uh, it is a little slower than using the wired display output, though. So that's something to watch out for. It's not always the. It's not a very good desktop experience. We'll just say that. Yeah, wireless has. That's the thing with with wireless is that you have a since uh, you have a delay between you moving your mouse and it moves on the screen, and that's really annoying to use. It's fine for watching movies and YouTube <laughs> videos and stuff, but to do everyday use mm -hmm. is it's a bit hard. Right. Well, you could, but <laughs> not quite so fun. Yeah. Um, and the second question. What is the most effective way someone can assist development when they don't have solid programming skills? Besides translating, of which I've already done quite a bit. First off, thank you for translating. It is a huge help that people go to translate.ubports.com and help us translate Ubuntu Touch to their native language. Um, other ways you can get involved include testing Ubuntu Touch in our QA Q Q group get that mixed up with this show all the time um where we commonly ask people to try something out such as uh, maybe a fix for libertine that's currently going through testing um and they can install it using ub ports q and it q q and mm. ports q a or other similar tools that allow them to test pull requests and other things um, there are also a lot more ways that you can get involved over on our Get Involved page at ubports.com. You can find that under the community section. 
Oh, and yes, I did forget something in the last question. Uh, the BQM10 HD and FHD have an HDMI out port, so they support external display via the HDMI out port. Oh. That is also a good experience. Forgot about those. I also hear there's another device coming in the future that um, should support Ubuntu Touch and uh, has a micro HDMI port. Uh, or is that mini HDMI? That's mini HDMI. That's a pine tab. Uh, just to get the hype up about that one. Not doing anything uh, out of the ordinary here. All right. And Capsia has a question this week. I'd like to ask if there will be some kind of collaboration with Mozilla, given that now they are working to make the ESR versions of Firefox compatible with the infrastructure of KaiOS, and possibly also with the old Firefox OS infrastructure. Could this bring Mozilla and UbiPorts together, and would it be possible to make Firefox OS apps available on Ubuntu Touch? Are there any possibilities, here we go, to have the Firefox browser available on Ubuntu Touch? That brought it home. Well, yeah, so not not to be that guy. This question. Not to be that guy, but you technically can run Firefox on Ubuntu Touch right now. Yep, the interface isn't so good for mobile. Not at all. Yeah. It's unusable. And no touch, and nothing. Works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing can run it. But sure. the thing is, if you have been following the Linux community about Linux phones, you can run it. And it's good. You can run Firefox. If it's okay, but even though it's unusable, the actual question. <laughs> even though it's unusable, you can run it. <laughs> let's let's answer the actual question. Let's yeah. Um, so, KaiOS is of course a fork of Firefox OS, which used the Gecko rendering engine to provide everything in the experience. So them integrating newer versions of Gecko into KaiOS doesn't mean much for the rest of the Linux community. And indeed, KaiOS is a much better sponsored project than Ubuntu Touch, which would make them probably a um, better partner for Mozilla. Uh, Firefox OS apps should just be HTML5 apps if I understand their development correctly. So... Yeah, they should be able to run on Ubuntu Touch provided they're packaged correctly. And indeed, there are HTML5 apps which run on Ubuntu Touch and are packaged as clicks, which run inside the Morph rendering engine at the moment, or it, which is Qt Web Engine. Um, and yes, it is possible to have the Firefox browser on Ubuntu Touch, but it'll take some more work with uh, Firefox's input handling as well as theming to make it look good and work right for touch. Yep. Um, the Android versions, of course, are built for Android and completely incompatible. Indeed. Yep. So... Uh, let's look at live chat a bit. How are the specs of the Pine tab compared to the BQ M10 FHD? The Pine tab includes the all winner A64, whereas the M10 includes a MediaTek quad core chip. Correct? I'm remembering specs from memory. Yes, thank you. Yes. The A64 is also a quad core chip, but it is at least five years old at this point, and it's a low end Android tablet CPU. The. Um, a64 is also included in the Pine Phone and the original Pine Book. So if you need a performance comparison, all of those things perform almost exactly the same. Yeah. Um, which will most likely be less well than the M10, either version of it. But still a very interesting device. And for the price that they are listing it for... Um, of course, I say this as someone who is working closely with Pine64, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. I think their pricing is fair. But again, working closely with them, received hardware from them at no charge. Okay, other questions in live chat or anything that anyone wants to say now? Alex wants the Pine tab. 
Alex wants a pine tab. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. The pine tab is pretty cool. It is a nice device. And they put a bigger battery in than I have, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so is Anbox coming on Ubuntu Touch? Anbox, as released today, is a um, development preview designed for people who would like to get involved developing Anbox. Since the release of Anbox for Ubuntu Touch, there have been no people developing Anbox on Ubuntu Touch. So um, that about tells us the interest level in some ways. Uh, which is unfortunate, but the way it is. Oh. And news on Holium. Alfred, can I put you on the spot for some news about Holium? Maybe some of the Nine stuff if you've got a insider look at that? Of course. Um, so it seems that, uh, not only it seems, but it, in actuality, our device is coming up with Android 9.1 on Halium. So it seems that uh, it will not take very long until we get the first devices uh, running with, I mean, I'm until it's done, of course, but uh, there are hopes that it will not be very long until Visible Android 9.0 uh, devices on, on on the horizon. So, Ooh. that is cool, and it's very good that people are working on that and interested. Special thanks to Notkit, especially for driving this uh, for so. Mm -hmm. Excellent, good work. Um, I may have seen one of the devices that he's working on uh, at Fosdem, and I can say it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it is really nice. <laughs> that one is really nice. Actually, he basically brought a backpack full of devices with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he brought up, he managed to do this every time. He brings on devices to Fosdem that I have never heard about before, that I've never seen before, and says, hey. And they're already running a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Sailorfish. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that 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 ooh, ooh, that device. I never heard about that. <laughs> it is so oh, cool. Erfan was recognized on XDA for porting Ubuntu Touch to the Xiaomi Redmi oh, Note yeah. Seven. Yeah. I wanted to just, I, I, I've just received word from the news, and by news <laughs> I news. mean not kid. <laughs> <laughs> your, word, your news were faster than my news. I also wanted to say so. We we were mentioned on XDA, and that's something cool because I think so far they did not really take note of what we're doing for the last two or three years then but um the idea is they also to take let me note <laughs> i'm sorry mm. <laughs> oh god no. <laughs> no no i forgot what i wanted to say alfred oh. don't touch your face there's a yeah. <laughs> but the, the nice thing would be if we can get a few nice knowledgeable people from XDA that know about Android bits and pieces, especially for Android 9 and Android 10 later, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will try to get our news pushed there more often, maybe. Yeah. Um, and thanks, Erfan. Er he's a cool guy. I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Please message me if I'm not. Um, He's the maintainer of Lineage for many devices, including the Moto X4, which I am particular to because I bought three used ones and gave them to my family. Uh, <laughs> it's like so. Christmas in your house. That's a good guy. He's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, yeah, really cool to see him joining our community as well. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who has shown interest and... It is excellent. I'm very happy. I should stop repeating myself now. <laughs> All right. Anyone see any more questions from live chat or the similar? Uh, since we were talking about the the pine tab, I guess I can just show it real quick to those that haven't seen it before. Uh, it looks like a tablet. Uh, yeah, uh, but that's not the the coolest part. Um, let me put me myself. And it comes with, with this real nice uh, that you just click keyboard. in. Keyboard. And then you just click it in with magnets. If I could take it the right way. If you turn it the right way, it clicks in. And then it is a laptop. And why I wanted to mention this is just um, how well, well, 
how well did will work with the bunch touch where we can just take a device uh, use it in tablet mode slap it on with uh, the keyboard and touchpad and it turns into desktop mode um, it mm -hmm. really shows the power that that the bunch touch can do uh, when used correctly on yeah yeah that was that was something that people were kind of whoa yeah at, uh, Fosdem. At Fosdem. <laughs> if you watch the Pine 64 booth, you would see people just going up to the Pine tab, taking it off the dock, putting it back on, and just repeating that a few times because the <laughs> apps go full screen and then go back out of full screen and then go back into full screen. <laughs> yeah, it's quite. It, it was amazing to see because I I have done it so many times that I'm uh, used to it. But I... <laughs> you you know that other people will do it too. Yeah, right? it is. It is amazing. <laughs> I would show it, but I don't have charge on it. I will put it on power and see if yeah. we have time in the end. Yep. Or at the after party. Or the after All right. party, yeah. Um, Donix asks in the super group, it's just a group now, Telegram, why the renaming of Unity 8 to Lomiri? Uh, the reasoning for that is outlined in our blog post on the topic, uh, Lomiri, new name, same great Unity 8 over at ubports.com slash blog. Um, and that is the best explanation that we have uh, that I will not try to repeat. <laughs> uh, other things going on. Uh, will it run on a 2012 Nexus tablet? No, only the 2013. You can tell it's a 2013 because the camera is offset from the center from the front from the front and it has a smooth back not a textured one um, otherwise I think that's about it going on around here what do you think yeah any other last minute previews anyone wants to give any teases Hmm, just the usual suspects. Um, actually, Nexus 6P is coming along nicely. I've got two or three reports of people being very happy where we are. Basically, it's only missing camera and audio and calls. Anything else, nice. everything else is working, and that's really a lot. Good work. And also, Nexus 5, the Halium 7.1 port is going on nicely. However, I would like to invite someone, whoever it would be, to work with me on this together because I cannot have too many ports at the same time because I'm also doing the Samsung S3 Neo still, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, we need a few people that help us bring the core devices to Halim 7.1. So I will also spin this up in the porting group again. But um, while porting on all the new devices, let's not forget that the old ones can also be ported at least one more time. Live demo. Uh, Marius, you have the mute unmute thing on screen. What? <laughs> it's okay, never mind. Just just finish your demo. Oh, right, 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 right. I already right. finished. Uh, I... Marius is the show stealer of the minute. Really. So here I had a keyboard, and uh, if I hit the magnet. Uh-oh, uh, -oh. there, uh, -oh. uh -oh. There we go. And it turns uh -oh. in. Uh -oh. It's desktop mode now. And then you take it off and <gasps> bang and then you turn it on again <laughs> bang and the color distorts <laughs> bang the sound effects <laughs> get get in <laughs> bang oh, well. if someone in the community <laughs> if someone in the community has an idea how we can do better device presentations <laughs> maybe with kind of a light box on a second camera that it's not moving all the time. Maybe somebody can build <laughs> something for us. It would be awesome. Huh? And also, can awesome. someone remix the bang, bang thing? <laughs> bang! <laughs> we, should, we should make Mario saying bang the new notification sound. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, bang! Oh, <laughs> Before we completely derail the Dalton, can you This is why OTH was well, just delayed. Yeah, yeah right. okay. <laughs> this is This is better. So now you can. Well. Uh, I don't know about nah. Oh my gosh! Someone said they're on the remix. Thank you. Focus. <laughs> there we go. Now we can. Bang. Okay. <laughs> okay. Enough. Bang. Let's stop it. Uh, All right. Get Let's in. end this train wreck uh, while we're still ahead. Um. Oh, we go. No. 
So thank you everyone for <laughs> for catching us for this Ubuntu Touch Q and A. Again, there is useful information for SARS CoV two and COVID nineteen down in the video description uh, if you haven't seen it yet, as well as um, information about uh, our new IBAN and bank account stuff. <laughs> And that's all in the video description. The fun doesn't stop here. We have so many more social medias that you can get this kind of thing <laughs> happening. Over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pixelfed, Mastodon, LinkedIn, or Diaspora. You can also get our news directly in your chat client via Matrix or Telegram. Again, links all down in the description. Um... I'd like to thank everyone who's handling our social media accounts at this time. It's uh, not always an easy job because people come to them with complaints a lot. Um, so thank you to everyone who's doing that. And thank you to everyone who's made our presence on social media so known. Uh, it's been amazing to see that. If you'd like to chat with us for some reason, uh, you can find us over at forums.ubports.com for long form content at ubports on telegram or hash ubports colon matrix.org on riot or fluffy chat. <sighs> I would like to thank you all for joining us and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bang. Bye.